Happy Halloween, everyone. Welcome to the Behavioral Arts. My name is Spidey and I use my degree in sociology and psychology, my certifications in body language analysis and criminal interrogation, and over 10 years as an award-winning mentalist to teach people behavioral analysis and practical psychology on stages and TV shows all over the world. And I'm really excited about this live stream because in this one, I'm not only going to be bringing in my experience with analysis, behavioral analysis, to try to figure out what's going on in these videos, but I'm also going to be bringing my experience as a mentalist. So a lot of you misunderstand what mentalism is. Um, it's trickery. And a lot of the time people use the same trickery. I mean, it's got some psychology involved. Obviously, we're going to really talk about that at great length. But sometimes people use the same tricks that I use to entertain people on stage and make it seem like I can read their minds to try to sell it as a real thing. So we're going to look at some videos here today uh, about ghost stories, people claiming to have supernatural abilities. And we're going to try to figure out all together, this is why I want to do this live, because as we all know, lie detection is very nuanced. You know, sometimes our different experience allows us to see different things. So all together with the live chat, we're going to try to figure out if, and by the way, there's a, there's a great big distinction here that's very important. We're not trying to figure out if these stories are real, because if you believe in ghosts, then these stories are real. If you don't believe in ghosts, these stories are not real. You will never believe it's real. This isn't about belief. What we're looking at is, do the people in these videos believe what they're saying? So in other words, are they knowingly deceiving people or do they actually believe the things that they're saying? There's an important distinction to be made there because as you know, the regular viewers know, I have respect for everyone's beliefs. And I think we need to create a space where everyone's respected. But if you're being deceptive and lying about the nature of what you're doing, then you and I have a problem, buddy. So, um, oh, thank you so much uh, about the nice comments about the background. Switch that up for you guys. Um, so let's dive right in. We're starting with a couple of ghost stories. Um, and by the way, all the links will be in the description after I'm done the live stream. I wanted to keep it a surprise what the content was, but everything we're looking at, all the things I referenced, things I talk about uh, will be in the description. So we're beginning with a couple of ghost stories. These are some videos I found online of people um, telling stories of ghost encounters. We are going to start with the first one. Here we go. Try to pay attention to the mood, the vibe, the word choice, how descriptive it is, how vivid it is to try to determine, again, not if the story is real, but if you feel to this person, they're being truthful. Here we go. First moved here, I moved in with a woman who was a friend of a friend. So she suggested that I join or go check out her coven that they meet at Griffith Park like every full moon to have a saging. So I just went and I was like, oh, there's a trail. I'm just gonna follow that trail right over there. That seems like a good idea. And then at one point, I remember I started hearing drumming, but I thought, hey, it's a coven, so that would make sense. There would be drumming, right? So, of course, I followed the drumming, going in and out, up and down, all over Griffith Park. And I was looking out on this vast forest of trees, and I see out of the corner of my eye something that's white, and it's moving, but it is gigantic. That's kind of weird, but maybe there could just be, I don't know, a cloth out in the middle of somewhere. As I'm walking back, something in me, for some reason, tells me to look back, and as I looked back, at that dead tree was the white thing that I had seen way far in the distance. How did it get here when I walked? No, it doesn't really matter to me. So I just booked it and left. It had like flowy something around its body, just going around. And I was like, okay, this is not something I really want to deal with. I'm going to go that way now. Wow. I can already see some amazing comments uh, with you guys pointing out some stuff. Yes. Nomads, real illustrators are on point. I'm trying to get the comment to flying up. Uh, Bridget, yes. Hand emphasis, absolutely. Illustrators, same comment twice in a row. That was awesome. So um, let's talk about uh, this, this, this story, this testimony that we're getting from uh, this person. So first of all, so here's the thing. I, I, I want to throw in, before we even begin, before we even begin, Let's look at the person. As you guys know, I often talk about decisions, whether it's the setting, whether it's what we're wearing, whether it's aesthetic decisions we make. And the reason I talk about this is because it plays a lot into my profession as a mentalist. So mentalists do something called cold reading. And cold reading is something that mentalists will use to entertain, to make it seem like we know things about you. And then mediums and psychics will sometimes use to try to convince you that they're in contact with supernatural forces. Now, cold, now the reason I say make it seem like is because cold reading has technique involved to it. We're looking for specific things. So you're not 
accidentally cold reading. You're trying to cold read. And a part of cold reading is to look at the demeanor of someone, to look at the way that they move, they talk, the way they interact with the people. And I want to show you here some footage of me. I'll talk over it. Um, cold reading. I think that's what's next. I'm pretty sure that's what's next. Yeah. So as you could see, this is like just me in performance cold reading people just based on what I see in their aesthetic, the way they interact with people. And the details of what I'm saying doesn't really matter. It's just observational. You can see the agreement there. And this is these are people who just walked into the room. I've never met them before. And purely based on observation, I can say certain things about the way they work, the way their mind works, the way they function. And you could see how it hits. So let me ask you guys this in the comments, in the chat, in a word or two, you're a mentalist. And this woman who just gave this story is in front of you. What are two or three adjectives that you might use? Let me know in the chat to describe her. I don't mean physically. I don't mean like petite or pretty or anything like that. I mean, in terms of the vibe you're getting, you're, you're, you're me, you're, you're the mentalist. This person's in front of you. What are some adjectives that you would use to describe her? Because that, a lot of the time we, we look for adjectives that describe the specific person based on what we see. So let me know in the, in the comments, in the chat, eccentric, I like that. Goth, okay, I, I, I like that. Um, we're gonna talk about my sessions in a minute, uh, Blue Bear. Uh, let's get some more words in here. Open, I like it. Excited, energetic, I love it. Funny, cheerful, genuine, animated, upbeat, quirky, outgoing, outgoing, yes, Bridget, high five, outgoing, love it. Okay, so we're getting a lot of great adjectives here. Um, in her own world, oh, who said that's so good? Animated, extraneous, open-minded, love it. Dark red rose, in her own world. That's an amazing catch. So let me tell you, this person shows up. I have to do a cold read on her. Here's some words I might throw into that cold read. Artistic, imaginative, uh, open-minded. A lot of you said open-minded. I really, really uh, believe in that. Confident, yes. Creative, heck yes. Spiritual, yes. So open-minded, artistic. If we look at her aesthetic, there's a lot of things that indicate a very artistic inclination. Not just the fact that she has tattoos, because nowadays tattoos can mean pretty much anything, but the specifics of the tattoos, they're so artful. The hair, the piercings, the way she's put together, the way she speaks. Um, she talks about how she moved to a new place and immediately agreed to move in with someone she's never met and then go to their coven meeting. A coven is a gathering of witches. So open-minded, willing to try new things. So those of you who said open-minded, heck yeah. Uh, new age, explorative, yes, absolutely creative, love it. So all these things to me predispose her to lean more into supernatural beliefs. And there's nothing wrong with that. But already, I'm more inclined, like to hear a story from her, I'm more inclined to believe that that's the kind of thing she would believe in than if we had someone who was a little bit more in the digital, logical, linear space. She has a vivid imagination and we can see she's great positive energy. So um, I very much do believe that she's predisposed. Let's look at some of her body language. So um, let's... I. For my analyses today, I'm because this is a Halloween stream, I actually have, um, I will be using my supernatural abilities to uh, help us with this analysis. So we're going to ask the spirits. Now, see, mentalists are always open about the fact that what we do is trickery. Even if the theme of what we do is spirits or supernatural, we're very open about the fact that we're using trickery. So keep that in mind throughout this stream, uh, because right now I have a spirit who's going to help us determine if she's being truthful or dishonest. Here we go. So excited. Uh, over here I have some, oh, I have a marker. I don't want you to see that. Nothing around the marker, no threads or anything like that, just a Sharpie. Put that down there for a sec. And I have some, uh, some blank index cards and I'll give these a bit of a mix. That you can see, mixy mixy. And again, these are just blank uh, index cards. I'm going to take one of them. I'll just very slowly. I'm going to take one of them, set it down there. Um, we don't need the rest. Sometimes I put a whole packet, but this, this should be pretty straightforward. Um, the marker goes on top like this and I'm going to fold in the corners like this. So we are going to ask the spirits. And I do this because again, it's, this is trickery. But we're going to ask the spirits to reveal to us if she is being truthful or deceptive. And by the way, the, the hanky like this folded over can show you that there's no threads. If there was a thread and I did this, the hanky would move. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. I'm getting something. And if you were here, you can look all around me. Nothing's moving. Not, not, not a single muscle. I think we have something. Let's take a look. Oh, it flipped over. But it says, bum, 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 truth with the spirit handwriting. Look at that. That's definitely not, <laughs> it's not my handwriting. Spirits. It's a spirits, right? Um, yes, truth. I do agree with the spirits on this one that as far as she's concerned, this is a truthful account. Let's look at the reasons why I believe that. Um, first of all, look at that. People were talking earlier about her illustrators. Illustrators are the gestures we make when we speak to emphasize what we're saying. And usually when we're being truthful, they're synced with what we're saying because they both come from the same thought. The gesture and the word comes from the same thought. When we're trying to sell a story or trying to oversell a story, they fall out of sync because what happens is we say something, then in our brain we go, no, no, you got to sell that more, then the gesture comes a little late. With her, the illustrators are on point. Um, there's, at one point she says, that seems like a good idea, and her voice drops right at the end of that sentence, and we see... Um, is that where the shrug is? I think I have it here. Yes. She shrugs a lot throughout this, by the way. There's a lot of shrugging, both shoulders, shrugging like this. And at that point, she goes, that seems like a good idea. Like, I decided to walk into that trail. That seems like a good idea. I have it right here. I want you to look at it again. To follow that trail right over there. That seems like a good idea. So see there how she goes, that seems like a good idea. And shrugging usually indicates a lack of something, a lack of knowledge, a lack of confidence. I don't, I don't care. I don't know. I don't have power. Uh, I couldn't agree more. In this case, I just think it's, I don't know what I was thinking. Like there's a legitimate part of her going, I don't, why, why would I do that? So she's, um, we're seeing those shrugs as a, it's not a lack of confidence as much as like a lack of understanding, I think is what those shrugs indicate. Um, I started hearing drumming. So, okay, here's another thing with her illustrators. When she tells this story, she's not an outside perspective trying to paint an image. She's reliving it. Most of her illustrators are the role that she's in because she goes, I started hearing drumming and her hand comes up like this. Check it out. I started hearing drumming. See? So when she illustrates, I started hearing drumming, it's not drumming. She's not trying to put this image in our head by showing us what a drum is. She's going, I started hearing drumming. She's re-experiencing that sound. Um, and then when she goes in and out, up and down, it's not this it's in and out up and down with her head she's following it she's stepping right back into that role she's reliving it there is an exception at some point she goes uh i walked back and i bolted like this but that's it besides that and i'll again leave a link in the description where you can go see her tell this story she's stepping into that moment so i think what's happening here is and we see moments if you watch the full clip where she goes you know it could have been a cloth or it could have been this we're seeing reasoning, but we're not seeing justification. She's not trying to justify to us why she drew these conclusions. She's just telling her story. And there's some reasoning in there and her trying to make sense of it herself. But I think overall, she very much believes that she experienced something supernatural that day. There's a healthy dose of skepticism, but there isn't an over dramatic amount of her trying to sell us this idea. Please believe me. So I think... We're good on this one. Let me know in the comments what you think. Yes, trying to find logic. I absolutely agree. Um, good. Great. Good. Happy to see. I mean, the comments are going by pretty quick for me, but... Yes, you could see her looking... David, correct. You could see her looking into her memories. She's trying to relive the moment. And, and to me, I think that's the big thing. It's not that she's trying to paint an image for us but she's stepping into it. Um, great. Let's move on. We have another ghost story here before uh, we start tackling the supernatural abilities that I'm really excited to talk about. Yes, lots of recall, Tammy. I do agree. Um, tell us how you did that trick. It's not a trick. It's the spirits, you guys. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going here. One more before I bring in my special guest for today. Uh, let's go. And I started jetting across the hallway. And as I was passing this room here, something grabbed my hair 
and yanked, yanked it back. It was pretty painful and my neck was really sore. The moment that happened, my sisters came rushing out because I started crying and they were all like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's the matter? And I was like, one of you guys pulled my hair. I've always believed in ghosts my whole life and I still do because I've had numerous accounts with things that were unexplained. This is only one of them, but they've all been things that weren't just apparitions and shadows, but things that I had like physical interaction with it, so to speak. I'm not gonna try and convince anybody what to believe. It's very real to me. There are things that even science can't quite explain. I don't think we're supposed to know everything. Okay, so there's another story. Um, let me know in the comments. You, I mean, we're already getting some, some early comments. Um, trying to sell it. I don't feel this one. Yes, hi, Secret McSquirrel. I see you in here. Thank you so much for always being here. Um, okay, so, so let's, uh, let's ask the spirits. Let's ask the spirits. Spirits, always. I always have to do this. It's like my mental, my mental disclaimer. Let's ask the spirits. So I actually have a very unique prop here I want to show you guys. I actually, you know, despite the fact that I don't really, uh, I, I do remain skeptical about a lot of things. I do collect items from the whole seance world because I really think it is a cool idea. And I have one of my favorite pieces here and I'll show it to you. And I've, I've used this all over television. Like I don't have someone here to examine it and touch and interact with it, but I've, I've done this on TV and I'll leave links in the description where you could see me perform this, where people do hold it and interact with it. So, um, Drawer, nothing inside there, you could see, but on top of the box, you could see where it says yes and no, the engravings, yes and no. This is actually called a spirit box. Psychics used to use this and they would hold a pendulum over it like this to see which way it swings. This would mean yes, this would mean no. We later found out that it was subtle movements called uh, idiomotor response that caused that movement. The people were moving it. So this literally has zero uh, supernatural abilities. I don't have a pendulum, I have something better. I have a pendulum style bell, you could see right in there. Nothing around it, nothing in contact with it, nothing touching it. And that goes on top of where it says yes. This is exactly where the pendulum would have been held. Like that. So you guys could see this in frame. So for the story that we just heard, we are going to ask, let me stabilize that. And once again, nothing, nothing in contact with it. We are going to ask, and I'll step back, the spirits. Is the woman in this video making this story up completely? Uh, is it entirely truthful? Oh, yeah, I forgot to summon. You have to, you have to first have to. <clears throat> uh, is there a presence amongst us? Ah, there we go. Good. We're not alone. Uh, let's, uh, let's ask. So let's ask again. Uh, did she make up the story? Hmm. Uh, uh, is she entirely truthful? Okay. Okay. Uh, Ooh, is it like somewhere in the middle? Like she's not sure, just a bit of skepticism. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, again, I agree with the bell. Sorry. I agree with the bell once again, and I'll show you guys nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, but I entirely agree with the bell. I think there are certain signs here that I think there's embellishment. I think at the core of it, something did happen. And let's look at some of the reasons why I believe this. So. Here's why. Um, so from the beginning, if we look at her gestures, it's from an outsider's perspective. And this doesn't mean anything in and of itself because she's consistent with that. I don't know if those of you remember when I did one of the Amber Heard analyses, Amber was telling a story where she was stepping into the role and she was saying what she saw and what was going on. And at some point she goes, and he pulled me by the hair. All of a sudden, she wasn't in her own role. So when there's that switch, to me, that's really interesting. With this woman, from the beginning, she's from an outside perspective. The room is here. The thing is here. I'm going like this. And then I, I feel something pulling my hair. So it's not like the other one where she's stepping into it. Now, some people illustrate this way. When they tell a story, they remember it from an outside perspective. And that's an interesting question for the chat. <clears throat> Let me know in the chat, when you remember something that happened to you, do you remember it as yourself or do you see it from an outside perspective, like you're watching yourself. Because I've had accounts of people do it both ways. So in her case, it's pretty consistent that she's from an outside perspective. That kind of already makes me lean a little bit that she's trying to paint an image for us, but this could simply be the way her mind works. So I'm not going to give that too much weight. Um, 
just do remember that in a lot of cases, truth tellers tell liars sell. So when you get this vibe that someone's really trying to sell something to you, that might indicate a little more that there's embellishment going on. Um, she has a fear of not being believed. So you have to remember that. Whatever deceptive tells we see, we are going to see in someone who's being truthful, but fears not being believed. Research does indicate that. So people who are telling the truth, but think you may not believe them, will show similar signs to someone who is making it up. So we do have to take that into account. So we can go back and forth with this quite a bit. Um, she spends a lot of time explaining her belief. Right at the end, she goes, you know, I, 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 this is something I believe in. It's been my family. And there's a lot of justifications. I, if you look at that first woman, she never feels the need to justify. She saw what she saw. That's what it is. And usually when we really believe in something, we don't spend too much time justifying our belief in it because it's just a thing. It's a real thing. So this justification to me was weird. I typically see that with people who doubt their own story because they go, if I doubt it, maybe my audience doubts it, I have to justify and try to sell it. There's a couple of uh, statements she makes that at the end have a little thing that kind of erased the statement. For example, she goes, it's very real to me. So it's very real to me. So is it really that real or is it real to you? So I think that's a little bit of her going, it's definitely real to me. I could see how it wouldn't be real to you because maybe it's not that believable, but to me it is. And then the other one that I thought was really interesting is she goes, I've had a lot of experiences like this, um, not just apparition, but physical. So physical interactions, so to speak. So I've had all these experiences and they weren't just communications uh, or apparition. <clears throat> they were physical, so to speak. Well, what does that mean? Physical, so to speak. So to speak means metaphorically, not quite. So you're really making a point. You're using a whole sentence to say it was actually real, kind of. You know what I mean? So like, it's kind of like taking away the conviction of what she just said. Um, and then at the end, she goes, you know, there are just some things science can't, science can't explain. I agree. There are things science can't explain. I'll give her that. But just overall, I think there's a contrast between <clears throat> doubt and convincing. And I think that over here, there's quite a bit of convincing trying to go on. Um, of her trying to sell to us that, no, this was definitely real. And, you know, I, I've had a lot of experiences like this, so to speak. So overall, I think, yes, too many qualifiers. I agree, Paul. So qualifiers are when words that we use to qualify our sentence as opposed to just say what we're thinking. And it was just a little bit uh, too much. So, yeah, Adriana, I, I agree. Uh, I think her sisters kind of played around with that, which is a great segue, Adriana, to my next point. Let's play a little bit of a game because I want to talk about people who tell ghost stories. A lot of the time when people tell ghost stories and we go, oh, they're totally making it up. That never happened. So let's talk about memory a little bit. We're going to play a little game. <clears throat> um, but first, actually, let's play a game. This game is about, I want to see how fast, how fast you guys are with the fingers, with the typing. So get ready to type. Don't write this down. This is, I want you to just remember this list. I'm going to say a bunch of Halloween related words. You don't have to remember them in order at all. Just listen, listen up. Here we go. Bunch of words. Ready? <clears throat> this is my Halloween words list. Sour, candy, sugar, bitter, good, taste, honey, soda, tooth, nice, chocolate, tea, cake, heart, pie. Those are the words. Don't need to remember them. Don't write them down. No need for any of that. I think most of you should get this very quickly. I want to see who's going to get it the fastest. So get ready to type. I'm going to list four words. I'm going to say four words. I want you to write down in the chat the word that was not in that list. So the word that was not in that list. Here we go. Sugar, chocolate, sweet, skeleton. Type the word, quick, 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 quick. Type the word that was not in the list. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's a bit of a delay, so I have to wait for it to come in, but, ooh, thanks for the super chats. I'll get to those in just a sec. Skeleton, 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 yes. Ooh, one person said something different. One person said something different. Skeleton, 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 chocolate. No, chocolate was in there. It's okay if you missed it, not a big deal. Taste. And taste wasn't one of the four words. Okay, so an overwhelming amount of you are saying skeleton, which is absolutely correct. The word skeleton was not in the list. But one person, 
one person. I'm trying to find it because you guys are just flying in with the comments. Okay, I'm so sorry. It flew too far up. But one person said, oh, there's another one who just said it, M MSJ. So a few of you said sweet. And that is also correct. Sweet was not in the list either. This is a little test. It's not about the, the speed of you typing. I just said that to get your first reaction answer out. Um, this isn't about that. What this test is about, and this test, and you could try this with your friends. You can go back and listen to that list of words. In a majority of cases, people will instantly know that skeleton was not in that list of words, but neither was sweet. So you didn't get it wrong. If you said skeleton, you didn't get it wrong at all. You're absolutely correct. Skeleton was not in that list, but neither was sweet. Why do so many less people say sweet? It wasn't in the list any more than skeleton was, but every word in the list related to the word sweet. So when we, it's kind of like a frequency. Think of it like a frequency. When we set our mind to a certain frequency, we can have certain experiences or thoughts that are in line with those frequencies. So I want you to think of these stories. Let's go back to the first one, the young lady in the forest. So the forest, the fact that she's there to join a coven, um, the mystery, the new experience. Think of all these things as the list of words. Chocolate, soda, tooth, sour, candy. It builds a certain expectation. And think of what she saw as the word sweet. It's not, it doesn't exist, but her mind is more tuned in to see something like that or to associate what she experiences to something like that because that's the mindset that she's in. It's no secret that our mindset affects the way we perceive things. It could shift our entire reality. So I didn't say one word didn't fit. I just said, which of these words was not in the list? So the correct answer technically is, well, two words weren't in the list. The point isn't if you got it right or wrong. Don't get super tilted on this. The, the simple point is skeleton wasn't in the list. So that is the correct answer, but so is sweet. The point is just so much, so much less people realize that sweet wasn't in the list because it just blends in with the other words. So it's not, it's not even a question of right or wrong. You, you all said the right answer. But no, I, I did not say that only one of those words wasn't in there. At least I, didn't th I don't think I did. But even if I did, the point is two words weren't in there. Look at me explaining my reasoning just like that second woman. Um, so memory is a flawed system. It's not built for accuracy. It's built for survival. And there's um, some studies, one of which... Something grabbed my oh, this hair. Is, I wanted you to see the gesture yanked, there of yanked it back. doing that. Um, so here's a study. A picture is worth a thousand lies using false photographs to create false childhood memories. This and many, many studies like it have shown us. So in this one, uh, Kimberly Wade showed a bunch of college students pictures of them in hot air balloons that were not real. They, from when they were young, it was photoshopped. And half the students who saw these fake pictures recounted the day vividly. They remembered it. They said what they did, who was there with them, what they saw full memories and they and they weren't making it up as far as they knew they were having these memories and once again the reason for that is because memory is a flawed system it's not perfect it's there for survival it helps us survive but there's a lot of ways to not manipulate that but your mind takes other elements and shifts your memory so it's very like that all these years later as they're remembering these things they're not even remembering it the right way so it's very possible that today they believe they saw certain things but that memory was completely altered with other experiences. It happens all the time. And there are so many studies that prove this. In the simple way that people ask them to tell the story, elements can be added. Uh, Lotfus and Palmer, another great study where they prove that in the way we ask questions, the words that we use to ask questions change the memory of someone, the actual physical memory that someone had. I'll leave a link in the description to that as well. Um, so that's that. I want to tell you a quick story about that hand gesture. So I was, I was hanging out this summer with my parents and my mom was telling me that when she was younger at school, uh, how teachers would get physical. Like when it was time to punish, they would get physical. And she said they would, uh, <clears throat> there was this one teacher who would hit, a, you know, hit the students with the rulers and she would pinch their ears and slap them on the face and pull their hair. And she was saying all this stuff. And I go, mom, she pulled your hair, didn't she? And she goes, what I go, she pulled your, she didn't hit you with a ruler. She didn't slap your foot, but she pulled your hair. And she goes, yeah, how'd you know? And I said, it was your gestures because my mom was consistently saying, hit, slap, pinch, pull our hair. And when she said, pull our hair, she closed her eyes for a moment. And we saw that, that discomfort. 
and the gesture wasn't this, it was all of a sudden being done to her. So that shift to me indicated, and of course it could be wrong. It could have just been a coincidence. But to me, I, I went with that and I said, that happened to you and she confirmed it. So look for that switch. Some people describe like this, some people step into it, but when you see that switch, might, might be worth looking into the reason. Okay, um, let's bring in, actually, let me show you this next person. Whew, so excited. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let me show you a couple of clips before we bring in my guest. These clips are from a gentleman called T Grams on TikTok, um, who a little while ago put up some very impressive videos of him demonstrating his telekinetic abilities. Telekinesis, of course, is the illusion. Some people believe it's real, and that's totally fine. Uh, but the idea that we can move objects with our minds. So let's take a look at T Grams and what he was doing. Sorry, I guess I kept this up. All right, here we go. So T Grams was moving a piece of paper that was balanced on a cup with his mind. So we could see there as he focuses his energy, the paper wiggles around. And this is something that he claims was, his, look at that, we see it even rotating a little bit. So this was his psychic energy. So on that video, which did really, really well on TikTok, some people said that, well, it's simply just the motion of your arms. You know, it's a very fragile balance. And as you move your arms, you know, it's just the wind or the slight gust is moving the paper. So he did a follow-up where he put a plastic container around the paper. Let's take a look at that. And we can see it's not as much as the first one, but we're definitely seeing something. It's wiggling. Wiggling, that's well, not as much. Maybe the maybe the Tupperware blocks telekinetic energy there, but uh, we see we see a movement. I must admit it's quite impressive. So this caught the attention of a TikToker that I'm a big fan of, a good friend of mine, admittedly, who had a couple of thoughts about this. And I'd like to welcome him to the channel. Uh, we're going to talk about what he's doing on TikTok, which is really awesome. Everybody, welcome to the channel. My friend, who's a fellow mentalist, very accomplished one by the name of Dustin Dean. Dusty, what you do, what's going on, buddy? What's up? Hello, hello. Oh. Hi. You lagged there for a sec. I, I hope that Ooh. was just, probably just because. Psychic powers, psychic just, abilities can do that. Yeah, two mentalists in the same room. It's messing with the Wi-Fi. Um, so Dustin, welcome to the channel, dude. I'm so excited that we finally get to work on something together. Dustin, you have a uh, TikTok by your name, Dustin Dean Mentalist, also known mm -hmm. as Debunk Talk. Why don't yeah. you tell us a little bit about what the mission is there and what you're trying, because I think a lot of you misunderstand what you're trying to do there. So why don't you yeah. tell us what, what your goal is with Debunk Talk and the Dustin Dean Mentalist TikTok page? So my main goal is to just kind of um, not challenge people's beliefs because everyone has their own personal beliefs and I'm totally okay with that, but it's to challenge claims. I think that's important. People who are using trickery and then making these claims like that they have telekinetic abilities or that they can speak to the dead or that they can uh, make flames go out with their minds. So me having those skills, same skills that you have that we've learned to do these tricks, I, I kind of could see how they're faking this or how I believe they were faking this. So what I do is I just replicate what they do and challenge them and offer them money to prove that what they're doing is legit yeah and it's not it's not so much like it's there's no way it's this but i can do the same thing with trickery so you know i would like to see some evidence that you're not doing it the same way that i did it and i think you get a lot of criticism from the psychic community or from the people who believe in supernatural stuff like oh you're just you know you're a hater and you're being a bully whereas i think it's the polar opposite i think you're on their side because if they believe in what they believe in, and there's people out there using what we know, trickery, to fake it, then that, that's not a friend of theirs at all. That's somebody right. who's, who's, fake, who's trying to prey on their beliefs by doing fake things. And I have a, we share, we talk about this a lot, we yeah. share our hatred for that kind of thing. If you want to believe in spirits and ghosts and things like that, no problem. That's your belief. You had experiences different than mine, no problem. But we have a problem when you start using the same things that you and I do on our stage shows Mm -hmm. to convince people that you have real abilities. That's a bit of a problem for me. Exactly. Because it's dishonest, isn't it? It is. It is. It's dishonest. It's misleading. And it just harms 
and and like we were saying, like there's a there's a whole witchcraft community on on uh, TikTok, which people think I, I like hate them, but I totally support them. Like I'm all about it. I'm like, hey, believe in witchcraft. That's great. Like I that I doesn't bother me at all. Um, but there are the people that I see that are literally just using trickery to make these things happen, and they're saying it's witchcraft. And it's helping, I like I always say, it, it's helping their community because now I'm weeding out these people who are claiming it's it's their, um, it's not a religion, but their practice and, and saying it's it's real witchcraft when it really isn't. And exactly. I think that's harmful. That's harmful to their community because then they don't know, you know, what is possible and what isn't. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like we know, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit. We know just how, to what extent, like, we'll do a mentalism show, and Dustin, I'm sure you have experience like this, to where we'll, we will say on stage that what we're doing is trickery, psychology, nonverbal communication. This is why I've studied nonverbal communication, to do what we do. And we're very open about this. Yeah. But even at that, after the show, we have people who come up to us and say, oh, my God, your ability to, like, connect psychically or the auras you see or I saw that, you know, and, and we're yeah. like, but we, you know, like my spirit belt. So many people have come up to me after, even when I say it's trickery, will come yeah. up to me and go, you know, can you contact such and such? And it's like, no, we can't. <laughs> but there are people out there using the same tricks we do to fake that. So right. T-grams fell on your radar because of this paper moving trick. Correct. Oh, wait, hold yeah. on, trick. Sorry, I, I take that back. Yeah. Demonstration. Demonstration. And sure. uh, so you saw the Tupperware version. Yeah. And you had an answer to that. I did. Can we I see? Did. Can we see? Can we see yeah. you do the same thing? Yeah. Um, so I actually happened to uh, bring bring my Tupperware here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is in, in case you don't know what this is called is called a psi wheel uh, in the psychic community, and it's a little hard to see what's under it, but there's a, a cork and then a needle and then just a piece of paper that is dangling on that needle. So I put the Tupperware over it. Um, I'm gonna try to do this live right now with you guys. And uh, I'm gonna try to take it a level past what T-Grams did there. I'm gonna try to uh, really get this to move, not just shake, but just to move. Just give me a moment to concentrate. Oh my God. There's gotta be a thread attached to that piece of paper, Dustin. No thread, no thread. Let me try to make it go the other way if I can. The other way? No, it's going the same way. Sometimes that happens. Psychic, <laughs> psychic powers are unpredictable. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Tell this, tell this, tell this bitch to go the other way. You're embarrassing yourself. There's people watching. There's like a thousand people watching, Dustin. You said it was going to go the other way. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's magnets, right? It isn't. It isn't. Uh, no magnets. No, no magnets, magnets, no threads. Uh, no threads, no magnets. It is uh, It is much simpler. Look, it's, I'm not even doing anything. And You're it's not even moving work. anymore. Oh, my God. That's how powerful you are. You emit the aura without even trying to. Exactly. Um, exactly. No magnets, no threads, no – what else could what would people think here? Uh, so static. this is something – this is, by the way, for the viewers, if you guys want to trick your friends tomorrow for Halloween, this is a, something you can do uh, easily. It's a lot of fun. Um Dustin, why don't you? So here's the thing: we're we're Dustin's about to kindly reveal to us how this <laughs> it's still going, how this works. Now, you might now here's here's something that's common with this kind of thing. People might look at it and go, "Oh yeah, okay, that's that's how," but that's not how T Grams was doing it. Clearly, it right. doesn't matter. The point is, there are ways to do these things that are not obvious. So invisible thumbelina. That's exactly what it is. Um, Dustin, why don't you tell us what's going on here? Yeah, so um, it's really simple. And it is a little similar to what I think Teddy Grant's. Let me try to do it like he was doing it. Oh, yeah, look at that. Is it moving? <laughs> uh, very slightly. It's like Yes, wiggling. it is. It is. It's uh, more or less as much as his. Look Dude, come on. Works. Yes. Okay. Yeah, come um, on. So here's the thing about Tupperware, okay? Tupperware <laughs> or any real, even glass or anything, when this is put over something, this is not vacuum sealed right? There is still air going under this container, you know, unless you were to like really tape around the sides. So I'm going to teach you how I do this. And this, you can do this at home because this will make it really simple for you. You don't need to do it this way, but this is how I do it because it makes it really easy. Um, the secret 
is that I'm blowing with my mouth. Um, but Dustin, and, there's you, a Tupperware really there. <laughs> you can't see, but what I'm doing is I'm just blowing like that. Okay, so you're not psychic, but you have the superpower of blowing through Tupperware is what you're saying. Exactly. But what I actually did is uh, you can see right there, there's like this uh, little piece of, uh, this is like plastic wrap. Normally I use tape. tape. That's the easiest way is just put some tape on there. And usually I do it a little smaller than that. So you can't really see it. And that just gives you enough space, just enough where you can just easily blow right under there. And sometimes you can, I was trying to get it to go the other way. Sometimes you can get it to go the other direction based on where, okay. how it is. Yeah, um, but that's it. It's that simple, and it's that's that simple. easy now, now, just air going through. Now, here's a fascinating thing. Some Tupperwares, you don't even have to put the tape because when you put them right. in the wash, the heat warps them a little, and those, those bridges and gaps are already there. And like you said, exactly. the current's coming in. So, Dustin, you as a mentalist knew exactly how to do this. Yeah. You see T. Grams. He does it on his yeah. stream, and you're thinking to yourself, there's a way to prove whether or not it's legit. And what is that way? Yeah. So um, when I came up with my challenge for it, I thought, well, I couldn't really fake it myself if I were to literally seal that container, the sides. And by using like duct tape, um, I mean, I could, like if I were to poke a hole in it, but that, I would see him do that. So you'd have to do it live. You'd have to seal everything it right so everyone can see. And if he could still move it, you know, still get uh, without air getting under there, then yeah, that would be proof that it was real telekinesis. Perfect. So Dustin T. Grams is, is claiming this and you say, okay, well, I'm willing to give you some money here. Yeah. If you can do this with a Tupperware that at the bottom you've sealed with some tape. That way there's nothing coming in. So T. Grams accepts your challenge yeah. and decides to uh, do a live stream where you're commenting uh, to, to set your conditions and yeah. he's going to demonstrate. And we're all excited. We're all waiting for the big day where he's going to do this video. I was waiting with bated breath and the video came. And yeah. I, I'm not going to play the whole video because it's a half hour long. Again, there will be a link yeah. in the description. Dustin put it on his YouTube channel. t -Grams took it down and, and made you know, a whole bunch of said some very mean things about Dustin. But uh, Dustin recorded the whole thing. It's on his YouTube. I will leave it in the description after this video. You guys go show Dustin some love for the hard work he's putting into exposing that some of these people are using or maybe using the techniques we use. I'm not going to play the whole video. I'm going to play bits of it, um, particularly the bit where he started getting aggravated because for a long time that paper was not budging. So Dustin, it seems to me like your conditions worked and at some point he started getting very irritated. Let's take a look at his behavior here. So we could see the blue tape at the bottom. Jesus, I keep losing energy. Hold on. Jesus, yo. <laughs> like y'all see I'm fucking pissed off up here. Oh my god, this yo. Like Nah, there's no pressure. I'm pissed the fuck off. Like, do you do you see my energy right now? I'm pissed off because of this dude. Like, yes, blowing the fuck out of me, yo. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh, yo. Like, I'm trying, yo. I really, I really just want him to delete the video and his account. Like, I'm so pissed right now, yo. Yeah, my energy is fighting with me like a mother. Is saying don't prove shit to that mother. Yeah, he's taking my energy. I'm not. I'm not cool with that. Like the them vampires, them energy vampires. They're real, yo. Bruh, I can do this shit. I just don't want to do it for him. Like everybody can do this. This, this shit is. It should be like child's play for us, but they didn't teach us this shit in school. So, oh my goodness. So if everybody just want to do me a favor and report the dude for bullying, that'd be cool. Because this, I, I can't do it for the reasons he want me to do it. I don't even want his money when I do it. Like, I was literally walking in some Louis Vuittons yesterday that I bought in cash. 
And I got the sandals to match. $600 for the sandals. Dustin, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think you could, you should change your website. Mentalist, Debunker, Energy Vampire. Energy Vampire. Let's talk about his behavior a little bit before we do. Dustin, I, I, I purposely, Dustin, I purposely told you that I wasn't going to tell you whether I think he believes in what yeah. he's doing or not, because I wanted you to, for the first time here, get my analysis of this. And I have very good reasons for this. So let me know in the chat, uh, what do you guys think? Does, so th here's the important question. The only question I'm curious about is, does T. Grams think legitimately that what he's doing is energy work or is he knowingly deceiving people? That's that for me. That's the only question that matters. I don't care if it's real. I don't think it's real. I don't think that's a, an acceptable real demonstration of energy, psychic energy. But does he believe it? That's uh, that's the question. Does he believe it? So the, the, once again, the spirits are going to be helping us here today, Dustin, to find an answer. Oh. Um, All right, Dustin, you're gonna have to pretend like you haven't seen this a billion times in my show. Sure. Okay. Um, so I've got a couple of things. I've got a bag of chalk. I want you guys to see this. different colors, different bits of chalk. I want you guys to see this. Uh, there's yellow, orange, green, red, blue. Dustin, can you see those? Yeah. Different colors of chalk. Those go inside the bag like this. Give it a mixy mix. And I'm randomly, without looking, going to reach in and just, just pick one. Dust on my... I'm going to reach in and just randomly pick one. And if you guys were here, one of you would do this, but you're not here. We have a, a red piece of chalk. We'll put that right okay. here. So... Chalk goes on chalkboards. I'm just going to break two pieces here. Just get them ready. There's one. There's two. I don't know if you guys could see that. It doesn't really matter if you see the chalk or not. And I have two chalkboards. Old chalkboards. Nothing on either side. That's very important. Dustin, you could see these? Yeah. I feel like I'm on the prices right. <laughs> um, Two chalkboards like this. And I'm going to take those two bits. One. Good. And two. He actually got those from um, like an abandoned school. Uh, he walked yeah, in and from an abandoned, uh, <laughs> It used to belong to an energy vampire. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, if you guys were here, I would put this in your hands because that piece of chalk is a whole experience, it's a whole thing. But but if you're here, you'll hear it, but you won't feel it. But if one of you is here, this would be in your hands. And this is my show, Dustin, you've seen, you know, people yell and scream and run away. Yeah, uh, but, but listen up, you'll, you'll, you'll still hear it. And this isn't, I haven't added anything in post in the stream. This, whatever you hear is coming live from here. Dustin, did you hear that? Yeah, that was. That and and was I promise you, if you were here, you can hold on to this. You could feel that chalk moving around. And it seems like we have a message. So we've asked the, 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 the spirit world. And again, I do this. Always my little disclaimer. Uh, if T. Grams believes if what he's doing is real or not. Here's the answer we got back. I don't even know. It's a big reveal. What does it say? It? It changed. It changed. Well, oddly, as cryptic and weird as that sounds, Dustin, I agree with the spirits. Here's what I think. Ooh. I think that initially he 100% believed in what he was doing. I think you successfully put doubt in his head. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support that. I'm going to support that with some Ooh. facts. I think what happened is he never gave it much thought. Now, this is a very ego-driven ego person, obviously, because... His answer to your skepticism isn't, that's fine, that's cool, you don't believe in no problem, it's shut right. this guy down for not believing in me. Um, mm -hmm. Let's take a look at his uh, TikTok page, because there's some clues there. Remember, guys, decisions. Decisions tell us a lot about a person. Let's take a look at his, look at that. That's his TikTok page, right? T Grams, Tenshi, shopping, shopping and retail. And retail. Why is it shopping and retail? Um, that's a different thing than the, than the ego point I'm trying to make. But why is it shopping in retail as opposed to, you know, spiritual whatever or spiritual journey, whatever? So that, that, was, that caught my eye, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is this. Look at the first line of his profile, what it says. The pronouns, right? We, us, our. You see that, Dustin? Yeah. Okay. 
That's not why we put pronouns on our profiles. We put pronouns on our profiles to let people know how to reference us. So you mm -hmm. say he, him, his, uh, she, her, hers. Right. They. Like that's what the pronoun I want you to use to denote me. He's putting the pronouns that he uses to talk about himself. We, us, our. We don't need to know that. We don't need to know what you call yourself. Just, if you want to call yourself we, go ahead. Call yourself we. Why is that there? Why are you telling me what you call yourself? So this is a very ego-driven person. Um, we saw those resume statements. The moment you got to him, he starts dropping his Louis Vuitton shoes and his Louis Vuitton sandals. Like it's all about ego with this guy. So let's look at some clues in his behavior when we were seeing that whole thing. Um, my energy is fighting with me. I don't need to prove shit to this MF. Okay, so here's two statements he made. Think about this. Two statements. He's taking my energy. He called you an energy vampire. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'd like to know, Dustin, how much experience do you have in energy vampirism? Like, have you studied? Yeah, I've been doing it for a few years, a few years. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to do to, like, just I have to feed off energy. It's how I survive. Yeah, it's um, like a vampire. But but in my, all honesty, it makes Dustin, my beard grow. <laughs> it gets the, the energy feeds the beard. But in all honesty, Dustin, have you yeah. put any time into studying how to siphon energy from people? No. You haven't. So no. he is a master of energy who spent years mastering energy. And from a distance, without even being in the same room with zero practice, you were able to siphon his energy. I find it a little unlikely, but that's not the main point. The main point is this. He's taking my energy. You're taking his energy effectively. You're good at it because he can't even do it a little bit. His next sentence, it's not like these were, the next sentence is, I could do this. I just don't want to do it for him. Those two statements contradict each other. Are you siphoning his energy or could he do this? Because those two things can't coexist. Right. Right? Um, because either you're a vampire or he can do this. Both can't coexist. Then he says, um, they didn't teach us this in school with an eyebrow flash. There's a lot of eyebrow flashing going on in this. Now, typically, if we look at his other videos, he doesn't eyebrow flash a lot. In fact, he doesn't move his face too much. But in this one, he's very animated and we're getting a lot of eyebrow flashes. Eyebrow flash is what we that do when we're seeking social connection, right? Like you mm -hmm. bump into someone and you go, hey, how are you? Eyebrows go up. We show innocence, goodwill, good intention. And he's doing this to his followers, his viewers. He goes, we can all do this. You can do this. He's trying to recruit in that moment to, mm -hmm. to, to support his belief. Right. Um, report this dude for bullying me. My question is this. If what he's doing is real, why? If what he's doing is real, you're the crazy one, right? right. Leave it out there. Some crazy guy out there is trying to say what I do is fake. Leave it out there. If I'm a pianist and I play the piano and someone out there is saying I can't play the piano, leave it out there. He's the one who's going to look crazy. Like, why is he so obsessed with reporting you, taking you down? You're bullying him. Why? If what he does is legit, you'll notice when you, there's certain psychics you call out and they don't bother. They just go, okay, that's fine. You want to believe that? That's fine. No problem. I'm so much more likely to believe that they believe what they're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, also, when he says to report you, He's talking in fists, like he's yeah. got both fists up and called this digital flexion. This happens when we're feeling stressed, anxious, aggressive. Those hands come in and we saw that. Um, I can't do it for the reasons he wants me. I don't even want the money. So again, we have a contrast. I can't do it for the reasons he wants. So I can't do it, but I don't want the money. Suggesting that he can do it, but doesn't want the money. Again, which is it? He's flip-flopping. I can do it. I can't do it. I can do it. I can't do it. Well, if you can do it, then he didn't siphon your energy. Then, but, but you won't get the money because you can do it. So do you see how his, he doesn't even know what he's claiming. Then the resume statements. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't need his money. I have Louis Vuitton. I have Louis Vuittons. I just bought Louis Vuittons with the matching sandals, $600. Okay, well, why don't you take the money and donate it to charity? Take the money. Right. There, right. There's two things I don't like about that. When they go, I don't, oh, I don't need his money. I don't need his money. Well, two things. One, fine. Don't keep it. Give it to charity. There's starving children. There's animals out there that are suffering. Use the money. Make the world a better place. No problem. You don't need it. Give it to someone else. And second, he wants to delete your account. Wouldn't it be so much more embarrassing if he just proved you wrong? Right. Like, fine. Take, take the money. Throw it away. I don't care. But you will have proven Dustin wrong. 
So he has this aggression towards you, but he can't do anything about it. Um, so, so yeah, we have the profile. We, us, are. Um, so here's my biggest thing. Here's my biggest thing to, to, for the conclusion. I just want to see what I wrote here. I think, okay, so here's what I think. Here's my biggest clue for this. He stopped doing it. He has other videos now where he's doing other things, uh, to, to, you know, energy and, and chakra cleansing. And, and I have no problem with these beliefs. Chakra cleansing goes very back in tribal rituals and there's, there's healing powers to that. There's just nothing wrong with that. Right. And he's doing some, some of this different content, but he stopped doing the paper trick. I watched a ton of his videos yesterday, dating back to months, a year ago. He hasn't done the paper trick since. You got to wonder why. If it's real, he would ignore you and he'd keep going. Dustin, how often do we get called, you know, fakes and this and that? I don't think people understand what mentalism is, but I'm not a stranger to a lot of what I do being right. called fake and fraudulent. But you know what I do? Right. I keep doing it because I understand that the disagreement is fine. So that was my biggest clue. He stopped doing it. I think you got to him, Dustin. I think what happened is at first he didn't bother to filter lo through logic what he can do. He's like, oh my God, look, I can make a paper move. And he convinced himself that he can. I think at first he legitimately believed he can. But I think when you called him out and he couldn't do it, yeah, he started with all the excuses. And, uh, and <laughs> this is a great super chat. We're going to get to that in a sec. And uh, I think what happened is you actually cast doubt into his head. And that's why he got so frustrated. Sun cost fallacy. He was so invested at that point that he couldn't backpedal. So he yeah. was like, I just want this guy to go away because yeah. it's embarrassed. He's emb you could see he's embarrassed. Mm -hmm. and, and some of you, a lot of people said that in the comments. So he just wants you to go away. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and I think it's a beautiful thing. I think you actually, although he won't admit it, and if he sees this video, he'll, he'll deny it. Um, yeah. And now, and now he's stuck. If he's watching his video, now he's stuck. He's like, oh my God, I was going to die. But he said he was going to deny it. So if I deny it, he'll be right. Oh my God. Uh. So, uh, but I think Ooh. you actually cast out because it's weird to me that he never did it again. That he did just go, like, this guy's full of it. I'm just going to keep doing this. You I'm actually. Froze. Sorry. Sorry. I froze. I froze. No, no, oh my God. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey, hello. My, my camera froze. Don't worry about it. It's like, a, it's a, I, 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 I'm, I'm quite the uh, energy vampire. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> Right, so, so yeah, that's, um, so that, so that, so that to me is what I think happened. I think at, at some point he believed it and then he stopped believing, not stopped believing in it, but I think you successfully put doubt in his mind. Mm. Um, so, okay. So people are talking about blowing under the Tupperware. Like he would have to know he was doing that. So blowing is not the only way to cause a current of air Right. by moving your hands like this. You can just get, because if you look at his paper, it wasn't spinning the way Dustin's is. It was just barely moving. So I don't think he was actually blowing. I think that's why he's wearing the mask. Great note. Right. I'm so glad you guys brought it up because I would have forgot. Um, the mask is there to prove he's not blowing because people said right. he's blowing. He, I don't think he's blowing. So that, that's an important note. I don't think he's purposely blowing. I think when he moves his hands like this, that there's a bit of air coming from his hands going under because it's moving so slightly. That, Dustin, would you agree that that's probably what's going on? Yes. Yeah. And that's what I, I thought he was doing as well. Um, and I, you don't get to see a lot of that there. But when I uh, when I initially challenged him and even during that live, I was nothing but like kind to him. I was like, hey, like, take your time. You know, don't worry. Like, just do your best. Like and because I personally felt like he believed that what he was doing was genuine, like you were saying, like he didn't understand why it was happening. Exactly. I Because I, I, I do see I must say this. I do see, like, he's trying for a really long time. He's really trying. And I feel like someone who knew they were blowing and you got them would give up a lot earlier and make excuses. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I just feel like him, like, continuously trying and getting frustrated and getting aggravated and saying, I just want this guy to go away. And he's trying. To me, it's like, why would he try? And I, we just showed a short clip. He tried for a long time. Right. Right. Um, so what did T. Grams go to? What is he doing now? Uh, I want to show you a clip, two clips of some of his more recent TikToks and show you why I have a problem with people like T. Grams. I don't know if, again, if you believe in energy and you believe in things and you want to spread positivity, no problem. But let's take a look at one of his recent um, TikToks. By the way, he mutters a lot and speaks really fast. So I hope you guys will understand what he's saying. But let's take a look at this. Dustin, uh, pay attention. I have a feeling this is going to 
rub you a All certain right. way. Burning sensation of the ears could mean that the spirit guys have a message coming for you. Right ear is good news, left ear is bad. Okay, so I don't know if you guys heard that. The volume is pretty low. But he says, a, a burning sensation in your ears means that the spirits, could mean that the spirits are trying to contact you. So it's a bit of a disclaimer. It could mean something else, but it could mean that they're trying to, spirits are trying to communicate with you. Right ear is good, left ear is bad. So let's, let's look at that again, because the volume is pretty low. So maybe you guys weren't ready for it. I just want everyone to hear this. Sorry, I don't know why the volume is that low. Here we go. Burning sensation of the ears could mean that the spirit guys have a message coming for you. Right ear is good news, left ear is bad. So right ear is good news, left ear is bad. So here's the problem for me with something Why did he sound like depressed? That. He sounded very sad when he said it. Very, like stoic. And then notice what I said, like facial expressions, like the way he was animated on the live stream with you. Um, yeah. Now, I'm not, listen, I'm not going to discount the fact that it's very possible there's substances involved in his diet <laughs> before filming that TikTok, but I'm not going to make assumptions. Um, right. Right ear is good, left ear is bad. Not right ear could be good, or right ear is typically good, left ear is typically bad. Like I talk about, you know, on the channel, I talk about things that were researched with body language sometimes, like things that were actually research it, even with that, I'll say, could mean this, could mean that, there's a nuance. But he is saying right ear is good news, left ear is bad. And here's my problem with that. You're gonna use a trick to move paper. People are gonna go, oh my God, that's amazing. They're gonna start following you. Then you're gonna tell them that a burning sensation in their left ear means that a spirit is trying to contact them with bad news. Do you know how much that can ruin someone's day, week, month, life? Yeah. It's tragic because now I follow this guy. I believe what he's selling. And then I'm walking down the street. I feel a tingle or a burning in my left ear. And now I get paranoid, convinced that the spirits are trying to send a negative message to me. Bad news. So right. T-Grams, if you're watching this, if this somehow made it on your radar, um, I think there's some of the things that you're doing that have good intention. When you're doing the chakra cleansing, when you're trying to experiment with the, to see if your viewers can – Connect with your thoughts. Nothing wrong with that. But t -grams, please, for me, if you see this video, I'm asking you human to human, as someone who cares about spirituality, from someone who cares about people, please try to refrain from saying things like, this means bad news or this means something negative because you're influencing people to now tune into that frequency. And you could do a lot of harm, man. So if, if you do hear this, if something good could come from this, um, please make it that maybe you can repackage your lessons to not suggest that if my left ear is tingling or burning, that the spirits have a negative message for me. You know, you have, you have a T-grams, you have a following and with, with great power comes great responsibility. My uncle Ben taught me that I'm kidding. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but T-grams, you have a following and a lot of them, you know, TikTok, they're young, they're, they're they believe in you. So please try to consider maybe saying that with a little bit of a disclaimer or something like that. Um, I would really appreciate that personally, t -Rams. Uh Let's look at another video of his. Okay. Okay, you're, you're not gonna understand a word he's saying on this, so I'm gonna tell you what he says before he says it. Okay. He's saying that if your eye twitches, um, something, something, for women, right is positive, left is negative, and for men, it's the way around. But but it's it's barely understandable. Here we go. Left eye twitching for females is good luck, and then bad luck for the right eye and opposite for males. Okay, sorry. Left eye twitching is good luck. Right eye is bad for females, and for males, it's the opposite. Isn't that quite binary for someone who refers to himself as we? <laughs> that is true. It is true. You know what I mean. Yeah. Sit with that for a sec. Hmm. Like you're telling us what twitching means for, for males and females, right. but he's a we, he's an our, he's an us. It's the first line of his profile. Now, maybe to be fair, to be fair, maybe all of those we's are all men or they're all women. Like he is nothing but a collective of one gender, maybe. Right, but right. you have to, like when you're, when you're specifying your, your, your pronoun, 
you're aware of the fact that there's people out there who don't identify as either. Um, and right. that's not my only problem with this. My other problem is what I said earlier. What do you mean with men it's different? With men it's left eye twitching is a bad sign. Come on now. Um, twitches can happen for a lot of reasons. I know that. I at least know that. Maybe, maybe eye twitching could be a bad omen, but I know that it could happen for other reasons. So, right. Yeah. Um, and so, exactly. no, I, I haven't, What's sorry, I, I haven't been able to see this person's uh, videos because he blocked me shortly oh. after that live, but I haven't okay. even seen these. So, it's new to me. Yeah. Um, someone in the comments, Invisible Ren, Ren is saying, uh, I have neurological problems. My left ear, oh, sorry, it flew up. Sorry. My left ear, uh, Burns and right eye twitches. If I believe this stuff, I'd be even worse off. I, I, imagine that. Imagine a kid who follows him yeah. and who has a neurological condition where they get a twitching in their eye or their ear. Now they're convinced that the spirits want bad things for them. Come on now. Come on now. And if and, and the thing about that is, is if you put that into someone's head, then they're going to start to the more you start to think something is causing bad luck, you're going to experience more bad luck because exactly. you're going to start recognizing it. You're going to say, oh, it's because of my eye or my ear. Exactly. But, it's like what we said earlier, the frequency. Like when you think of all these words that relate to sweet, you think sweet was part of that list because that's the setting that you've right. placed in your head. This next clip is something, Dustin, that I very much looking forward to watching with you this Halloween. Um, no this way. is, we talked about this, one of our favorite videos. So Dustin, you've based what you're doing here. It's no secret. And a lot of people mentioned this in the chat. Okay. You based your work, your TikTok page on the work of one man that influenced both of our careers enormously. And what is that man's name? James Randy. James Randy, the homie. Yeah. Uh, Dustin, who is James Randy? James Randy was a magician who was heavily inspired himself by Houdini. Because Houdini did the same kind of thing. He would debunk psychics and mediums and all that good stuff. Um, and James Randi was also known as the Amazing Randi. He was a magician, but he spent a lot of his career just debunking these claims, just like I'm doing. And uh, with him, he offered money as well. But his was a million dollars that he offered. I don't have that much money yet. But <laughs> he offered a million dollars to anyone who could prove that they had a supernatural ability and prove it under like scientific test conditions. And he did this all over television. He had a show for a while. And you guys can look this up on YouTube where people would come in with claims and he would set test conditions mm -hmm. and he would test it. And uh, most of the time it wouldn't work out. He was also uh, the one who ran Alpha Project, which was he took three mentalists to a psych lab, heavily funded psych lab. Uh, he, and his point was to prove that unless you do what we do and you know the secrets we know, you cannot test for psychic ability because you don't know what to look for. So this lab that was fu heavily funded, full of researchers, um, after months determined that these three gentlemen had real psychic powers. And then James Randi revealed that they're nothing but magicians. Banachek was one of them, a famous mentalist working in Vegas now. You could see his show in Vegas. Uh, James Randi pulled the rug out from under and said, nope, these weren't real psychics. We set the whole thing up. You do not know how to test for this. And the lab was shut down. And this was a lab that was heavily funded for psychic research. And the point was, you have to know what we know to test that. So we're going to watch an old clip here. This is my favorite. Um, Dustin, before your TikTok came along, because your TikTok is my guilty pleasure, man. I giggle. I just watch it and I, get, I love it so much. Thank you. Um, and I hope, I hope, we're going to leave a link in the description. Secret McScroll was posting your link earlier. Um, I, I hope you guys will go check him out and encourage him because he's getting a lot of heat from people who, Take that disagreement and use it as an excuse to bash Dustin just because he doesn't agree with them. And I, I hate that. As you guys know, I live in the gray area, so I, I can't deal with that kind of thing. Um, but we're going to look at this is this is amazing. And I've heard James Randi. I, I met James Randi. He told me the story of what actually happened here. I'm going to give you guys some behind-the-scenes insight. This is a gentleman called James Hydrick. Dustin, what did, what did James Hydrick claim he can do? Uh, so James Hydrick claimed he had, I believe he was calling it telekinesis. Um, but he would, so, so sometimes he would move like pages of paper. Sometimes he would move like a pencil and make that like blow off of the desk or whatever, a table. Um, but basically move things with his mind with like chi energy. So, so let's see. Let's see what he did. So this is him on a talk show with Bob Barker. Um, and uh, let's take a look.
What are you going to do, James? I'm going to move a pencil for you. With just psychic powers? Just psychic powers. Very well. Oh, my God. Is it true that you can also turn the pages of this telephone directory? Yes, it is. And you will do that for us? I'll try. Should I take the pencil off the table? Sh yes. All right. Mm. Ready? It looks great. Right. It looks good. so good. So now James Randi came, came on the show and he said, I think James Hydric is just blowing. And what did he do to prove that that might be a possibility, Dustin? So uh, he decided to put some uh, pieces of, I believe it was styrofoam or foam or something, it was light pieces of foam. Uh, and as you can see, he's like sprinkling it all around the book. Um, because then if, if he isn't blowing, those pieces wouldn't move. He would just be able to move the paper. But if those move, we know that air is involved. Exactly. So the, 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 the theory was that he's just blowing, right? And that's a, that, that pencil thing. That's something mentalists do all the time. That's another one you could do tomorrow at your Halloween party. You put a pencil on the table and you focus on it and you bring their attention. Misdirection is very important with what we do. You bring your attention down. You move your hand over it, around it, really build the focus. And then as you go like this and you do your mentalism gesture, you just, you don't go <laughs> like this. You just gently like this right on and you aim for in, you aim for in front of the so like if the pencil is here on the table you're not aiming here you're aiming here in front of it because the your gust of air is going to hit the table glide along and push the pencil this is something we've all done at bars with straws dustin of course another and it's great, a great tip. trick it's a another great, great tip and, and hydric was really good at this is um so you aim for in front but you also right as you blow you look away yeah, because then they're going to remember your head turned and it seems like, oh, well, he couldn't have you know, blown it. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So after the blow, you turn your head because what happens is they see the movement. And they look up at you and they see that you're like this. So they go, oh, he couldn't have possibly blown. And, and I will admit, Hydric was very good at not his body language doesn't signal blowing at all. He doesn't even purse his lips a little. He literally very goes like this. <sighs> yeah. So he's I mean, he's really good at it. I'm going to give him that. So, so the styrofoam comes out. Um, now, spoiler alert, this isn't going to work, but the reason I'm spoiling it is this. He's going to be asked about why it's not working. To all the regular viewers of the channel, we talk about stress. We talk about how, you know, lie detection is, is not something that is scientifically, anybody could do it 100% of the time. We just have certain tells that indicate we might need to ask some more questions, something indicating stress, clusters of behaviors. Look at him. There's nothing, literally nothing. There's, he's making excuses, but in terms of body language, there is nowhere near enough of a cluster of deception. So the guy's a really good BS artist. Here we go. And by the way, James Randi said that what we're about to see, like him trying, took hours. On the clip, we see it for like 20 minutes. James? Ready. But this apparently took hours. People left the studio, had, had, had dinner, came back. He was still at it. And you gotta love you gotta love that he's trying. Like you know, I talked earlier about Tgrams, like to how he he kept trying. To me, it's convincing, man. To me, it's convincing that he's actually trying to make this work. Like that's what I'm saying. Like let's be honest. We like to study deception. We like to try to figure out what can indicate deception. And it's yeah. a learning curve. We're always learning new stuff. But this doesn't look deceptive. It looks like he's actually trying. The styrofoam and the lights form electricity, which pulls the page. Look. Look oh my God, this is my favorite. He's trying to prove that it falls. And it like, that was almost magical. It pulls the page down. It's going the other way. <laughs> freeing the pages. The <laughs> static is going to still be here because of the foam. This isn't a magician's trick. I can't just come up, bang, bang, and it's over. I have to be to where I can work with something small and then big, you know, to build up my own self. I love the admission. There's, there is one thing. It's called an admission with a, within a lie. This isn't a magician's trick. Right. But besides that, like the guy is like just 
straight face talking about this. It's funny because if I were him, I'm surprised he didn't do this, but he should have like, I mean, I guess maybe it was in the parameters of the challenge. Like if any of the styrofoam moved, it would be over, but he should have like tried. He should have tried and aimed like as high as he could so that maybe it would move like styrofoam would move a little bit. But then if I were him, I would have just been like, well, it's, I can't control exactly where the, you know what, dude, that's what I would have done. We're such mentalists because I've always (laughs) wondered why I didn't do that. Like you're going to get embarrassed either way. Right. Try to make some money out of it. Even if there's a 5% chance, just go for it. That's what I would have done. Yeah. (laughs) Now listen, I have much less patience for a guy like this than T-grams because with T-grams, I don't know for a fact, oh, my battery's dying. I have to fix that. I'll, I'll fix it while I watch this next bit. That's what was happening to mine. I had to I'd plug mine in. That's funny. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe I'll, anyways, if I, if I, if it just goes away, it was an energy vampire. I'll be right back. Um, with, <laughs> T-grams, <laughs> with T-grams, I don't know if he knows or not. I don't know. Uh, I, I think at some point he believed it. This guy's blowing. He knows he's blowing. So I have such little patience for this. And you know what? James Randi exposing him was a good thing because you guys can go check him out on Wikipedia. James Heydrich. I'll leave a link in the description. He ended up getting criminal charges against him for some pretty disgusting things. Yeah. Not pretty disgusting. Morbidly disgusting things. He's a terrible person. Yeah. He's a terrible human being. He is a disgusting POS. So you know what? I'm so happy that he was completely um, exposed. Uh, let me switch my battery real quick. Uh, no, you know what? Let's look at. Um, hmm, let me switch it real quick. It'll take ten seconds. Dustin, while yeah. we're doing that, tell them uh, tell them about one of your favorite debunk stories from tic- from your TikTok page. Yeah, tell absolutely. us one of your favorites. Absolutely. So um, one of my my favorite things that I debunked was this. Uh, uh, she was a girl that called herself the Candle Girl. And um, she was blowing up on TikTok. And specifically, she was blowing up in the witch talk community, which was witchcraft. And she was claiming that she had, um, like, her heritage was witches. And, you know, in her genes, she had, like, witch <laughs> witchcraft genes. And she was able to make candles light from nothing. Now, when I saw this, I was even fooled myself. I knew there was a trick. But, you know, maybe, you know, I thought like, oh, okay, you know, I gave the benefit of the doubt, but me being a skeptic, I was like, all right, there's gotta be a trick here. So I spent hours, literally hours trying to figure this trick out. I was like looking at other magicians, like what did they have, have they done on this subject? And I couldn't find anything. I was mixing chemicals in my bathroom. It was terrible. It was like, I was causing like chemical burns. Not a good idea. Don't do this at home. Um, <laughs> but that it, once I found out the secret that it was just so simple, and it clicked because it was, this was during um, the pandemic, right? This was 2020. And I was like, all right, what would she have that like everyone has right now? What could they do? And it was hand sanitizer. I realized that hand sanitizer burns, if, if you have a high enough um, alcohol concentration, it's 70% or higher usually. Um, it burns invisibly because ethyl alcohol is what makes it, you know, work. And it's, it's like, it's not totally invisible, but it's, pretty invisible, like, especially if you have a lot of light on it. Um, It's like a very light blue. And on the camera, it's basically invisible. So I did it and I tried it and it worked. And then I started to look at her videos and I started to look real closely. And then I could see that there was a little blue hue and that that's what she was doing. So um, a lot of people were believing her in the witch witchcraft community. And I finally, uh, I did a video replicating it, challenging her. And she got very upset. Um, she blocked me eventually. She didn't take the challenge and, um, she had a ton of backlash because people started saying, you know, like exposed, you're not a real witch. And, uh, the witchcraft community started to turn on her. So then what she did is, uh, she deleted any videos that said she was like doing it genuinely with witchcraft and she started to call it a trick which I thought was great. I was like, great, this is what I wanted to begin with. Exactly. Um, but of course she didn't acknowledge me and then she kind of revealed it herself. Um, but she still does it to this day and she's still, now she's she's a little more playful with it, which is great. Yeah. I'm, that's what I wanted. So yeah. <laughs> it was a win-win. Mission accomplished. You did a great job. And, I, and I've gone and I've tried to find videos of her on her page of her claiming it's real. They're not there. It's in a joke setting. She makes scenarios like comparing it to, you know, things. But it's never, it's not presented as real anymore. So, right. Dustin, not all superheroes wear capes, man. <laughs> you, uh, 
you, you did a really good job on that one. And again, everyone, by the way, thanks for saying it in the comments, guys. If you could like this video, as you could see, we put a lot of work into this to bring you guys, you know, a great Halloween special here, behavior, mentalism, all kinds of stuff. It takes just one second. Hit that like. It, I really do appreciate that. It helps a lot with discovery. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And also, I will leave links in the description to where you can go check out Dustin. We have a little bit, a couple more things here, a lot of fun left, but we'll be wrapping up very soon here. Um, I do want to say, uh, so I, I put this little compilation together because I want to show you guys. And before we look at this last subject, which... Dustin and I are going to get very angry about this last one. Very angry. Um, before we go on to this subject, I want to show you this. So as a mentalist, Dustin and I, as mentalists, we get on stage, we use trickery, psychology, body language to convince people that we could read their minds. But when we're asked, that's a lot of people put mediums and mentalists in the same category. We're not. We're almost polar opposites because we will always admit that what we're doing is trickery, nonverbal communication and psychology, a little bit of persuasion, a little bit of influence. Um, to accomplish what we accomplish. And uh, I want, but we, again, earlier I hinted this, there's a very real reaction to this. Now I, around Halloween, offer a show. It's a seance show. So a seance, of course, at the turn of the century was events that psychics and mediums would hold around the table where they would do things and they would, we would hear noises and things would move. And most of it was heavily debunked. Most of it. We know how they were doing most of it. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was it was started by, with the Fox sisters, and people would come from all over the world to see them. And uh, at the time, people thought it was real. Abraham Lincoln would go to seances. Presidents, politicians, sci the scientific community would go to seances. And good. I want to show you here some clips from my set. Now, I will leave links in the description to where you could see a lot of these tricks afterwards. You can go check them out. Um, but I want you to see. This is my. This is bits from my. Did seance. you feel something? Yeah. On what did you feel? It's moving. <laughs> Is that the block of wood hitting the other? Yeah. You feel it moving? Yes. But you're not doing that. No. Didn't that look like something tugged on the rope? Yes. Is anything touching the rope? No. That was one. Oh my God. <laughs> so you can see the fear in him. Like this isn't just- That's two. <laughs> two. Slowly lift that cup. Slowly. To close the seance. So a few things. First of all, you could see the difference in reactions. You know, we have Aaron on one side. None of these people were in on it. None of these people were actors. None of these people knew what was going to happen. You have one of them just laughing. People go to laughter a lot. And that's a, that's a fear response. Um, it's her reminding herself that there's nothing to fear. But you could see the one guy, Todd, he's not okay. And by the way, I start my show with a disclaimer. None of this is real. I use trickery to reenact a seance. So nothing, nothing about that. But the setting makes it real. And I'll leave links in the description because I want you guys to go see these effects. I'll leave a link to the whole seance. That entire seance is on YouTube. It's about an hour long. It's a great thing to watch right. on Halloween. These are all real people sitting around the table. Uh, Dustin, our, our, our mutual acquaintance, Chris Ramsey, hosted it, filmed it, yeah. edited, produced it. So um, have you seen the seance? I have. I have. Okay. It's really so, good. It's really good. Thank you good. so much. So the bottom line is this. I could have easily used those things to convince that guy, Todd, the one that was like hunched over, like right. moments from death. I could have convinced him that this is real. There's reality to this. You could see in his face that there's a belief there. So, um, and again, this is all, it's all trickery. And I'm very open with that. I call these reenactments. I use my skills to reenact them. So I want you to be aware of that as we look at this next subject. Um, by the way, super chats, I'm going to get to those at the end. Thank you so much. We've got a bunch of them. I'm going to get to all the super chats at the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm having such a great time here. Dustin, we might have to make this an annual thing. Let me know in the it's great. Yeah. chat if you guys would want to do this annual Halloween special. I'm loving this. Okay, um, Dustin, who are, we, who are we talking about for our last subject? Who is this guy? Uh, Tell us. All right, this is uh... – <laughs> 
I already forget his name, but it's like Wolf Master, I think. Grand Master name. Wolf. Master Wolf. Okay. Grand Master. Yeah. Grand Master Wolf. Grand, sorry. Grand Master Wolf. Um, who, to my surprise, I, I knew of him. All right. So I saw like he was, I, I thought he was doing this years ago, but you know, Spidey showed me he's still doing it. He's still doing this. Uh, this guy is on YouTube and he claims he is like a, a chi master, psychic energy practitioner. And I believe he sells courses on this. I could be wrong, but I yeah, think well, he, you, know, you could, I went on his website. You can book consultations. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, he's a guy who, who claims he can do these things. Yeah. So, so Grandmaster Wolf uh, and he demonstrates on YouTube and um, to be fair, one of his titles is mentalist, one of his titles, but really one of his titles in some of his videos, it starts with mentalist and on his website, it, it's mentioned, but, but it that makes me more angry to be honest. That does make me a little more angry because, that, because it get it makes people think there's a lot of times where I tell people I'm a mentalist and they go, Oh, you're so full of sh shit. There's no such thing as a mentalist. And I go, yeah. I know <laughs> that, that, that's what I am. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. There, yeah. I mean, there is such a thing as a mentalist, right. but it's not like, it's, it's weird. There is such a thing as a mentalist the same way there's such a thing as a magician. You know what I mean? Right. Like someone who uses trickery to convince you of magic. Well, in yeah. the same sense, a mentalist is someone who uses trickery psychology and nonverbal communication to convince you that they're a psychic. What you mean is there's no such thing as psychics. And I think we agree, but they just lash out. You call yourself a mentalist. And you guys will see it, the community. You'll see it in my comments. Because in the beginning of every video, I say I'm a mentalist. Every now and then you'll see in the comments, people go, oh, you're such a fraud. You say you're a mentalist. There's no such thing. But we're agreeing. I know. That's what a mentalist okay. is. So when he says he's a mentalist, he means it as the other thing. Like, Because listen to the pattern. Listen to the things he says. That's not what mentalists say ever. So let's take a look at some of his uh, demonstrations. Here we go. I'm so excited for you guys to see this. I'm so happy. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you guys are having a good stream. Oh, no, no. This, I'm sorry. This is <laughs> yeah, my, this that's guy, not him. This that's, not him. that's another guy. That's just one of my bits from my seance where I was going to demonstrate. Wow. <laughs> this was embarrassing. Um, this fraud right this, here. This fraud. This, this, this men, mentalist. No, this is uh, another, one of my, another one of my seance reenactments where I caused two people in the audience to actually hallucinate a spirit. They were both pointing to it, talking about it. And I'll leave the link in the description after this. Um, they used the Ouija board to find the name of the spirit. It was full on. So even when we talk about ghost stories, I just want to demonstrate that there are ways we have methods to create full on hallucinations. They both saw a spirit with the name Carl and none of these people are actors. None of them knew what was going to happen. So you can see the reactions there. I'll leave a link. I want you guys to see this because I want you to see just how much mentalism can be used to create things that look real when they aren't. Which is which is part of the goal. Okay, now on to Grandmaster Wolf. That was hilarious. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have three balloons: a black balloon inside a clear balloon, inside another clear balloon. I hope you can see that. This was a suggestion from one of my students. Question being, can I influence the middle balloon, the black one, without influencing the other two? My answer is, I don't know. I haven't tried before, so we're going to have a go. If I can get this to sit here without blowing away. There's quite a bit of breeze out here at the moment. Let's see. Do you hear that? Yeah. It looks the great. answer is yes. I mean, I mean, if you didn't know the secret, it's so it. good. It's convincing. That it's is convincing. It's so good. Yeah. Now, um, here's what bothered me about this clip when I first saw it. Again, we're talking about indicators of deception and stress and all these things. Um, there's something that bothered me. When he said, I don't know, I haven't tried it before. When he looked straight at the camera, no excuse making, we didn't see any 
lip activity, any fluff. Dustin, these are things we look for. Impossible deception. You know, nothing, nothing will ever indicate for sure deception, but impossible deception. Stress goes up. So we look for these things. There was nothing. There was nothing. He goes, I don't know. I haven't tried before. D dead serious to the camera. And it bothered me. I was like, why am I not seeing even a little bit of something with the eyes, a flutter, a compression? Give me something. I don't need a cluster, but give me something. And uh, I realized why. It's not a lie. He hasn't tried before. He hasn't tried using energy to pop a balloon before because he knows he can't do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why he's like, I don't know. I've never tried before. Yeah, we know that I, it, it, it hit me like a, like a like, brick in the face. It's, like, <laughs> it's true. He's being truthful. He hasn't tried before because he knows how to do the trick. Now I want you to notice something about Grandmaster uh, Wolf. Wolf. Yeah. He moves like a magician. The way he holds that balloon, the way he displays, this is stuff we study. Like the way after it pops, he does this with the hands like to show. Like this is very mentalist magic. The way he holds, it's not just held like this. He holds it like this to show he's got showmanship. So yeah. it's giving him away. That's where, that's, where, that's where it's leaking for me. I may not see signs of deception, but given our experience, I know what a showman looks like and he's one of them. Um, so how does he do it in the chat? Let's let's hear your theories in the chat. How does he do it? How does, yeah, how does I'm the middle? Excited. I'm excited. How does like, the middle balloon know. pop? Let, uh, someone someone's onto something. Lennox Williams art. Uh, Mongoose got it. Let's go. Oh, the the links in the description aren't there yet, everyone. They will be after the stream. I didn't want to ruin it before the stream, but to, for you guys to know what's coming up. So as soon as it's done, give me like. 15 minutes, I'll pop them all there. You can go watch all the sound stuff, all these clips, links to Dustin, links to Grandmaster Wolf, links to T-Grams, everything will be in there. Um, yes, okay, so so one person got it at least. Oh, another person just got it. So here's the explanation. Now, you're gonna see how it's done and then and then I'll explain further. Or here's a possible explanation. There's a laser. Now that laser is green. Not all lasers have color. Infrared lasers, you wouldn't see it that way. But this person in their YouTube video wants you to see what's going on. So we've got a laser. Now here's the thing about light. Light goes through clear, obviously. If you have a window and you shine a light, you will see it on the other side. But the color black, you won't. If I tint my windows black, you won't see on the other side. It stops the light. And with it, it stops the heat. So when you shine a high power laser, on a balloon inside a balloon, here's what happens. And again, this one's green, but not all are. Some are, you wouldn't see it. Boom, right there. Exactly the same thing. There it is. Now, can I prove to you that that's what Grandmaster Wolf did? And that, oh, look at this guy. You just go bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Fun. I, I didn't realize I didn't cut the video. I thought <laughs> oh, this is just dragging. Okay. Um, Laserhacker.com. So, <laughs> so um, can I prove to you that that's what Grandmaster Wolf did and that he's not actually using his powers to do the same thing? Uh, I can't. Maybe he coincidentally is doing something that can be done with science. It's very possible. Very specifically a black balloon. And a very, very balloon. specifically a black balloon inside a clear balloon to demonstrate like you have chi, but you're demonstrating something that you don't need chi to demonstrate. So, right. um, so, so no, I can't prove that, but I can claim this. Dustin, what's your challenge at now? 10,000? 10,000. Yep. I will double it. I will give 20,000 of my own money. So we're going to make a complete 30,000. And Grandmaster Wolf, that $30,000 is yours. It will meet somewhere you want. I don't care. You, you call it. I'll come to you wherever you are. Um, I will bring balloons. We will go into a room together, you and me and Dustin. Dustin, you're invited to come as well. We will set everything up. We'll set up a camera. We'll leave if you want. If you think we're energy vampires with zero training who can... You're a chi master, by the way. You teach this. You, you talk about people like us being frauds and fakes. You say that, and we're about to see a clip where you call us out. So I think it'd be impressive if I can use my non-existent training to stop you, but I'll do whatever you want. I'll leave the room if you want. Camera on. We'll obviously have to make sure you haven't brought a laser in with you. But if you can do this three times, we'll set up three of them. If you can do this three times, $30,000 is yours. And before you say you don't need my money, give it to charity. There's starving children out there. There's animals that are suffering out there. 
give it to them. $30,000. If you deny me this, you're denying the charities out there who can definitely use it even if you can't. Yeah. So hit me up, comment on the channel, find me on uh, social media, however you want to communicate. Let's do it. $30,000 for you to do that. Um, cause I, and you know what, as angry as I sound, I would love for you to succeed. I would love for you to succeed. I will not siphon your energy because I want you to prove me wrong. I what Dustin, why did we become mentalists? Because first of all, I became a mentalist because I watched a mentalist and he fooled me. And I thought I was like amazed. I was like, Oh my God, like that's, is this real? This is so cool. Exactly. Um, so we yeah, became like, mentalists because we want this to be real. Yeah. Like it's fascinating. And I would like that, that would be the most amazing thing. Like it would be worth the money. I'd be like, yeah. all Happily. right, this is crazy. Happily. Yeah. Happily. Let's keep going with GMW. <laughs> GMW. GM dubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Model Here it is. Oh man. So good. So good. Yeah, it's you should have gone the other way. Start with this one. This is the opening. <laughs> yeah, you should have built up. That looks so good. So, so it almost looks like a mentalist demo, right? Like a, like a mentalist trying to sell his act to court, but it's not yeah. because he claims that he's, this is chi and it's energy and he can do these things. And the static paper, we learned that in my first magic book. Like it's, it's such an easy thing. Um, the, the, okay, so the bottle crush. Dustin, let's talk about the bottle crush. Actually, yeah. Dustin, tell us about this covert thing you're doing on TikTok. I think the subscribers are going to be very interested to hear about that. Yeah, so um, actually it, it all started when my account – we were talking about Tgrams um, wanting my account to be taken down and banned. Um, that happened. It did happen. My TikTok account was permanent, permanently banned from TikTok because I had a mass reporting. And I, it wasn't from Tgrams, I don't think, but from a bunch of people that were angry and uh, took down my account. So I said, eventually I got it back. I kept appealing it. But um, during that time, I said, all right, well, if I can't have my own account, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making fake accounts. And uh, I'm going to start getting these people that, you know, some of them were friends, people that I knew uh, in my area. And I took them and I said, all right, I'm going to I'm going to train you. I'm going to teach you how to do these tricks. And we're going to convince people that this is real, that this is legit. So I had a psychic medium um, who went on there and she convinced people that she could talk to spirits and that there was haunted activity. I had a chi master who claimed that he could do basically the same things that grand bottles including crushing the bottles in the same conditions. Um, and uh, also I have a, a haunted doll, but I haven't really revealed that one yet. <laughs> but yeah, making fake pages where eventually I come out and I say, hey, this was me the whole time. And I got all of you to believe that this was real. And this is so great to me because you're not saying you're all frauds, you're all fakes. What you believe in is poop. You're not saying that. Right. And, I, and I think it's noble that you're not saying that, but you're saying... I can do these things with trickery as well. So please uh, uh, apply a little bit of critical thinking when you look critical at these thinking. things. Again, I can't stress this enough. Whatever you want to believe is fine. If you're here watching this and you believe in spirituality and you have certain practices and beliefs, please, you're welcome here. Don't for one second feel like you're not. But don't use what we do to sell it as that. So that's all you're saying with these fake pages. You're going... right. I can do trick and people don't know it's fake. And what's beautiful, what I found beautiful and I snicker every time I see this is these psychics, these energy workers with hundreds of thousands of followers will yep. go comment on these accounts and go, Oh my God, I could sense the energy off this doll. Yeah. I could see the energy. I could see your, Oh, I could see your aura. Your chi is really strong. Yep. Well, now I have a question. <laughs> if you're really an aura seer, right? Why are you seeing an aura on a fake video? If you're really an expert on things that are haunted, why are you commenting on a fake video of a fake doll saying that you can see the negative energy? And we're not talking just random people. We're talking big accounts who claim to have yeah. big abilities. And guys, please, if you're watching this right now, share this story. You know, Share the fact that this is going on out there, that there's a gentleman who's 
you know, today on social media, it's all about clout. Dustin knows that he's going to piss people off. And it's not easy to do that. And he's doing this to show that a lot of these big accounts are claiming to go, oh, I see the negative energy here, but it's a fake trick. So unless coincidentally the doll that you got at Target uh, <laughs> had negative, a negative aura around it, coincidentally, I don't know why they're seeing a, a negativity around it. And uh, you know what's, what's another interesting point about that clout is I have found – that it is 10 times easier for me to go viral with these fake pages. Like the haunted doll one, within a week on TikTok, I had almost 200,000 followers, which was like, you know, it, I'm at, I'm at uh, almost half a million on my own, but like that took a year and a half, yeah. I think. Hard work, like constant. Literally like, of, like two videos with a haunted doll, boom followers viral and same with every other fake page I've made. It's, it's so easy to just lie to people and, and, and do that and get the attention and the clout. And I can see how these people would want to do that because it's easy and it, it feels good to go viral. So like, it's, it's crazy, but that's a good point because if I were doing what I'm doing for clout, I wouldn't be doing this. Like it's, it's exactly. not the best you way be, to get clout. We, we would lean into the haunted dolls. Do you have any idea how easy it is for me to take all my little seance bits, my bells and, and, and slates and things and start convincing yeah. people that I'm a spirit worker and get that, that would go super viral. Yeah. But no, I, I sit here and I go, no, I'm going to use body language to prove that these people are full of it. Right. Uh, let's keep going with GM dubs. GM dubs. By the end of this, you can be like dubs. <laughs> Here's a tip. Please, everyone, please, everyone, listen to the words here. Because, Dustin, this is an attack. What he's okay. saying here is an attack. He's using oh, yeah. his chi to attack us. Listen to the words, everyone. We talk a lot about statement analysis on the channel. You're ready for this. Listen to – I'm not going to do this analysis. You're doing it, the viewers. Here we go. For your progression, there are obviously – people who have practiced these things correctly and who can obviously do amazing things with their minds and any intelligent person can learn how from these people alternatively though and unfortunately there are the more narrow-minded who convincingly construct in their minds ways of seeming to be able to do these things with trickery and based on their own contrivances convince themselves and others that our minds have no power. This attitude will infect your self-faith. Ignore it as you would ignore the chattering of a monkey. Did he just call us chattering monkeys? Chattering monkeys, man. Oh, I want him to take the challenge. I want to take the challenge. I want to take the challenge. Take the challenge. Take the it's challenge. clever. It's clever, you know, just being like, yeah, you know, these people are going to say these things, but just ignore them. <laughs> I don't know. In the comments, about. in the comments, let us know, did you catch what he's trying to do with that? So what is he trying to do? I mean, it's a, listen, here, I'll tell you what he said again. Obviously, obviously twice. Obviously, I don't think it's that obvious. Even a smart person would understand that what he's doing isn't obvious, right? He has to teach it. Therefore, it's not obvious. Obviously, people who have practiced this properly and can obviously do amazing things, right? So obviously, there are people who have done this. Any intelligent person can learn how. Listen to that. Yes, somebody got it in the chat. Moonlight, you're a genius. Um, then people do this with trickery. Convince others, uh, something about narrow minds, or, oh, convince others that our minds have no power. So, again, any intelligent person can learn this, but the monkeys, me and Dustin being the monkeys, convince others that our minds have no power. What is he doing there? What is that? What, what is he doing? What is he trying to do there? Let's get in the chat. I know a lot of you are going to get it. A lot of you are already getting it. He is creating a false equivalence. He is creating a false definition to say, if you're intelligent, you believe this. But if you're an idiot, um, you, you try to convince people that our minds have no power. Dustin, do we think that our minds have no power? No. 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 Our minds have incredible power. 
just not the power to ignite supercomputers. matches. And here's what's lovely about those matches, Mr. Wolf. The same way you pop that balloon would work on matches. Yeah. So all you've done so far to me is demonstrate that you have an infrared laser. That's it. Because now I'm not saying that's I'm not saying for maybe your mind is that powerful, but I can do both those things with a laser. So take the challenge. 30 grand, I will come to you. I will pay my own flight. I'll pay Dustin's flight. We will come to you. 30 grand. We go into a room, we set it up. We'll go where you want. Wherever, however you think you can block our energy vampirism, we'll do it. Right, Dustin? Yeah. Hundred percent. Um, and all you got to do is all you got to do is prove it. That's it. Because listen, this frustration that I have, the frustration Dustin has, it's not towards the belief. Dustin, you made such a great point. It's not the belief; it's the claim. And you're yeah. claiming things that just and it's that attack at the end that like we're the monkeys, we're the chattering monkeys. Ignore us like chattering monkeys. Okay, well this chattering monkey just offered you thirty thousand dollars. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, big dubs. Let's go. Anyway, all right. Yeah. Despite being passive aggressive, it's not that passive. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty direct aggressive. I want to thank everyone. Uh, this, you know, it's, it's a, I'm sorry to end like that. You know, I, I had such a great time with this stream. As you could tell, I love Halloween. I always have. Uh, I want to thank Dustin for being here with us. Dustin, thank you so much, man. I love what you're thank doing you. out there. And I'm so sorry that the psychic community uh, or the supernatural community sees that as a negative thing. I, I wish and hope that they will start to see that you're on their side. By yeah. exposing those amongst them that are like us, pretending to be like them. Right. Um, yeah, you know, I'll throw in uh, dubs. I'll throw in some uh, Louis Vuitton sandals. <laughs> Grandmaster. So that's $30,000 and Louis Vuitton sandals. So that T you and T-Gram can, can hook us up. <laughs> yeah, T-Gram can <laughs> hook us up. Um, so I want to thank everyone for being here with us today. Share the video if you thought there was some good value here. I definitely think there was. Dustin, it was such a pleasure. I would love to have you back on the channel uh, eventually to yeah. look at more things like this. For People sure. claiming certain things and try to see with the body language, with the demonstrations, how legit it is. Let me know if you guys would like. Oh, Super Chats, of course. Thank you for reminding me. Wow. Um, Dustin, you're staying for the Super Chats. We'll go through them really quick. That'll be a more positive way to end it. But uh, – yeah, send in your last super chats, guys, because we're gonna we're gonna stop that in a minute. But yeah, uh, let me know in the comments in the chat if you're watching this after the live. Uh, let me know if you would like to have Dustin back on the channel that we could debunk. We can use our collective skills to to debunk some some peeps out there. I would love to do content like that. Honestly, if you guys enjoyed yeah. this kind of thing, let me know. Uh, let's do some super chats. Here we go. Boom. Is this going to be scary, Spidey? Cat in Virginia. Well, I feel like by now we've answered either yes or no. I hope it wasn't too scary, Cat. Thank you for the super chat. This is so fun. Love your channel. You and your videos always teach me cool stuff and make me laugh. Love the Halloween vibes today. Thank you, Natalie, so much. I took a lot of time to decorate, change the lights, got some pumpkins. It'll be back for next week's video to what it was to its former glory, but I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. There was tons of comments about that, so thanks. This is something that people can get a lot of social scrutiny for, which can lead to the qualifiers and overemphasis. Lindsay, I agree. That's a wonderful point. So she's talking about earlier uh, when the woman was telling her story, how she was like qualifying and overemphasizing. I do agree that, again, when we, when we think people won't believe us, we tend to do that. So I don't necessarily think she's making it all up. I think something did happen in that hallway with the hair. I think her memory is kind of embellishing a little. I think she's doubting it herself a little, but I don't think it's entirely made up at all. But Lindsay, that's a great comment. Thank you. Dustin is a vampire of hotness. Woo! Woo! Unfortunately, he's married, ladies. Got the yeah. ring. Got yeah, the he's ring. Married. Yeah, he's he's married. Is that ring? <laughs> does that ring emit vampiric energy? Um, so this is where this is where I keep the trapped energy. It's okay. like it sucks in, and this is where I get my power. Got it. Got it. Like a, like a hub. Yeah, like it stores it. God, yeah. Love it. Okay, I didn't like know an that. infinity stone for marble, I guess. <laughs> Patty, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Maddie, thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. Jen, thank you so much. Your fans are awesome. They're awesome. Georgina, happy Halloween, Spidey. Fun show and informative. I've been trying to teach my niece this that it is trickery. It can be fun, entertaining, but not real. Yes, Georgina, absolutely. And you know, you can encourage your niece 
to follow Dustin on um, TikTok. It is very kid friendly. He doesn't swear anything like that. Um, and you could just watch the stream with them once again. I really, I really, of all the content I've done recently, this is one that I'm very passionate about. So if you guys want to share this with friends of yours, whether they believe or they don't believe, I think it was a lot of good value in today's. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Zenya, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Okay, it isn't negative. As a pagan, I know y'all aren't being negative, period. Yes, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. And full respect, Kay, I'm so glad that, that you're here and feel that you're being respected and represented. We never, ever want to insult anyone's beliefs. Oh, Aww. He's whining. He's whining. So I got to bring him up here. Who's this? This is my dog, Chewy. Chewy. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm not good at doing not that. I'm not, oh. <laughs> not very good at Chewy impressions. So do you think there are any real psychics? Wow. What a way to end this. Blue Bear. Mm. Killing it. Dustin, yes or no? Or more elaborate answer. All right. Um, my personal opinion, my personal belief, I don't believe in psychics. I don't believe in anything supernatural. And that's just my personal belief as a skeptic. However, like we were saying earlier, earlier, I would absolutely love to be proven wrong. That would be amazing. Like, it's not like, like if I were to see something that was like proof, I wouldn't deny it. I'd be like, oh my God, like this just changed everything. This is real. This is awesome. Um, so I would love to see it. Oh, I would love to see it, but I personally do not believe it. Or, or I should say, I haven't seen anything that has convinced me that there are real psychics. You stole my answer. So so I, uh, I tend to lean, for myself, I tend to lean a lot more towards skepticism only because we know what we know. I know that I can do a lot of these things with trickery, uh, body language. A lot of my cold readings are based on body language. You know, all the stuff you guys saw before with those two women reacting, just basically observing the way they move, but you know, what kind of people this, they are. So nonverbal communication, I know I can reproduce these things. So I know how easy it is to, to believe in things. I know how memory works, you know, like because of my degree, I, 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 I lean towards skepticism. However, it's more so that I haven't seen anything that's convinced me. I haven't seen anything that I can't do. You know what I mean? I'm saying that I can do a trickery. Now, does that mean that it's necessary that they're using trickery to do it? No, it doesn't mean that. And I will admit that I have seen psychics and mediums that are very good at cold reading, really good at cold reading. Like they get pretty specific and they get a lot of hits. Now, I know how to do that too, but I studied behavior analysis for like a decade and maybe they did, maybe they didn't, I don't know. So I think there are different words for the same thing. You know, I call it behavior analysis. You might call it intuition, psychic connection. There are a lot of different answers. I don't think we have all the answers. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, I've seen impressive things, but not enough to convince me that psychic powers are real for me. But I have friends that are psychics. I have friends who believe in psychics. I try to give them my perspective on it. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you had a different experience than mine, no problem. All respect. But don't use what we use to lie to people. And I think that is the best way to end this stream. Happy Halloween to everyone. Be safe out there. I hope you guys have an awesome time tomorrow, uh, whether you're trick-or-treating with the kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, the family. Have fun. Try the tricks. You know, move pencils. You know what? I'll leave a couple of links in the description to some Halloween tricks you can learn from my other channel. Easy stuff to fool your friends around Halloween. A lot of fun stuff on, on the channel. I'll leave those links as well. Have fun. You know, talk about this. Talk about what we did on the stream today uh, with your friends. Hope you guys had a good time. Let us know in the comments down below if you believe in psychics and what you thought of this video. We'll see you on the next one. Dustin, I hope you can come back someday. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yes.